I hated my name too growing up, so I changed it. Can you imagine? That was it was really fun to listen to that because I related, but for different reasons. Anyway, we talked about that the other day, right? Katrina Del Mar. Who has a name like Katrina Del Mar? Like a Mexican stripper. <laughs> Right, so I, you guys know I have these books in the other room, and like cool. most of them are blank because I'm not a really, um, <laughs> I've, been a real, I've been a photographer all these years, and I haven't really been a writer, and I'm starting to be a writer, sort of. I don't know, it's like starting to happen, and so, like um, any true Aries, I just made the books, and like they're like just getting ahead of myself a little. Bit. <laughs> 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 we love these books. Yeah. <laughs> Smooching in the corner. I love it. So, do you guys want to hear? Like, I'll read a poem. Okay, I'll just tell you what I'm going to do. I'll read a poem, and I'm really nervous because I'm not, I'm not really good at this, but I will try. All right. All right. Do great. Uh, yeah. Go. You go. Okay. Here I go. All right. This one's um. I placed my heart in your hands. I didn't know that my skin was thin enough to reach in and grab it. I was barely paying attention to myself, so caught up in your infectious laugh, your great conversation. I placed my heart in your hands. You didn't know it was a real heart. How could you? No statements were made. No, <clears throat> this is important. <laughs> you could have thought it a paper heart, a valentine made of cheap, chalky candy. Who eats those? They wind up on the floor, crushed into powder with one boot stomp, which is what went down, and me with it. <laughs> I'm just going to read the back of this book. This is a, a short one. The whole world is dirt. I'll never stop it falling. <laughs> I'm going to read a few short ones. Disappearance is your forte, your summer sky's starry night, between every bright spot, a black hole, vast and inviting. I like short ones. I like short ones. First printing, one. Oh, okay. One, just one. First printing, one. Okay, I'll read a long one now. Since you asked for short ones, I'm going to read a long one, just to be contrary. <laughs> <laughs> stop me. Don't stop me if you heard this one before, because you might have. You ran so fast, your long hair flowing blackly into the dark night, like a panther streak, and then you saved me, and told me you'd been a sprinter a lifetime ago. Your rescue came just in time. The heavy breather lunatic was almost seething, his chafing pant hot on my neck when you arrived with a crew of burning outcasts. I swam because I wanted to swim, and because I was meant to. Maybe it was some kind of test, but the water was cool and clear. I could see the meter's long weeds almost reaching my feet from the bottom. The current was almost lazy, slow. It felt good and right to be swimming there alongside your kayak. <laughs> I swill, you swoon, your very purple heart a gesture of retraction. Even in its, even in its swollen seeming push, it actually recedes, wounded to the woods, on an upbeat, vanishing into the dark knots and tangles. Black like wet trucks and ivy adding its dark shimmer. Only if a cloud disperses the starlight and moon black. Here, thick polluted cloud metallically and unnaturally reflective of a harlot city's hard light. Cast like pearls crushed into the pink breast of swine. I was told the city light was once blue, elegant, and might again be one day. But all my life and yours too, this crass orange suffuses every drunken night. Slow shudder on the excess, one success. Your chest in my face, your hips in my hands. Here I am casting my pearlless heart to your hot pink in a word, flesh. Under the stress, a heart set to race. The cocaine had me measuring heartbeats. Surely this time it will explode. Surely this time I passed. Not so well counted, in fact. It was impossible to count. Tick tock, one, two, three, five, six, seven, and lost count. One, two, and lost count. One, two, three, almost up to 15, or was it? And lost count. And lost. Counted the drilling into the ice, counted the months since I left, counted the strippers I took home, counted, counted time spent versus money made in tips, tips of coke instead of money, and money lost. Here, all color drains from the picture, into a technicolor sack, tossed six months into the future. But here is gray, 
gray light, gray wall, lighter and darker only, then eyes shut for hope of a daring dream. Yeah. 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 All right, I'm going to read my novel, Gang Girl. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to read you the first page because that's about all there is. <laughs> <laughs> On the block. I lived on the block with the most famous dope spot in the East Village. It was called Laundromat because it was in a laundromat, and I was so naive I did my laundry there. <laughs> <laughs> I asked my new roommate, Lauren, the girl with long blonde hair and a vaguely English accent and a boyfriend in a band who dyed his long hair black and had the skinniest legs I've ever, ever seen, I asked her, why are all these people lined up in front of the laundromat? <laughs> she said, honey, they're lined up for do to buy dope. This is the biggest dope spot in the neighborhood. This is the Sears Roebuck of dope. <laughs> I was astonished. I couldn't believe people standing in line like that. I started to notice little things about the block. Lauren said, here's why you'll never get mugged on 7th Street. On East 7th Street, sorry. It's a dope spot, and the ponies allow no other crime there. Here, sorry. They have, this is such tiny type, and I can barely see it. <laughs> the ponies police, oh wait. The, uh, okay. The ponies allow no other crime here. They have lookouts and they don't want police. The ponies police this spot. It's probably safer than any other block in New York. This, the Hell's Angels block, and maybe the block where the police precinct is. Hot nights, I'd sleep up on the roof. The old steel safety grating over my, there's a quotation marks around safety, so I'll do the air quotes. The old steel <laughs> safety grating over my ground floor window wouldn't open. It's lucky we never had a fire. I couldn't have put in an air conditioner even if I could have afforded one. The backyard was a mess. It smelled vaguely like cat piss and was filled with dark trash. But up on the roof on a summer night, the breezes blew and it felt flesh, fresh and clean. I'd sleep up there. Occasionally waking, I'd see a silhouette, a guard on the neighboring roof. I felt safe up there because I knew it was, there was a lookout. Rumors flew through the neighborhood about the gang, that they kept horses in their apartments. Nobody knew for sure, and at that time, I surely didn't. I could hear horses. I heard them especially at night, at night, hooves on pavement. One day I was out on the stoop when a fight broke out between a drunk guy with a baby and a stroller and the bodega owner. The drunk was trying to force the stroller through the tiny doorway into the tiny shop, but it just wouldn't fit. He was going, for yet, he was going in for yet another beer. The poor baby, maybe a two-year-old, a sweet girl, looked helplessly over her shoulder as she, she was being jerked around backwards. The shopkeeper said, yo, you can't bring that in here. Fuck, I can't, the guy muttered. I see horses come through. I ain't see horses come through here. Los caballeros putas riding through every building on this block. <laughs> Fuck up the shopkeeper, looked up and down the block nervously, looked at me to see if as, as if I to see if I had heard. I just dropped my chin in rhythm and adjusted my headphones as though I was listening to music. Down the street was the ponies headquarters. For this neighborhood it was an old building built maybe in the eighteen forties. I found out later how vast their network was, how under this building tunnels went to the river, to the subways, to the bridges bridge anchorages. Now it was just a building full of mysterious women, and I couldn't stay away. <laughs> oh my god. All right, I'm going to read a dream, because like, this, is, this is a journal I kept from 1995 all the way through 1996, and then I found it again. I started writing, a, I wrote a few dreams from 2011. I just got to read one. <laughs> so it's not like writing it's just dream notes and there's headlines like I, I, I write dreams with headlines and then I fill it in fill in the details so <clears throat> I'm not going to read the headlines I go to use the restroom in an Asian nail hair salon that I know upstairs I see the room where I used to nap it's a place I feel safe in this city the women come up and sit in this room with rosary beads Frida and her partner alternate wait Frida and her partner, or alternate Frida and her partner, invite me to this Pray the Rosary Club or class. I hesitate. They say, in other places, this costs a lot. <laughs> it, seems like, it seems like hip yoga or knitting. I'm curious, so I sit down. Some women are already praying. The teacher turns to me and says, where is your Eucharist? <laughs> I guess that she's referring to my rosary, be rosary beads, and I say, I don't have one. She says, everyone was given a Eucharist. You are a Catholic, aren't you? I say, yes, but I must have, gotten, I must have given mine away. She says, we will have to give her the silver runes to start with so she can learn the symbols. <laughs> I find that I have a book of fairy tales up in my, in my lap. It's a story that I don't recognize about a wolf and a child's book of illustrations. 
The wolf is going to a house. They get me the runes and I begin to look at the symbols and learn their meanings. I'm with Alice O'Malley and someone else who's a bit ahead of us, and we appear to be wending our way through a graveyard. It's a bit of a trek. We wade through chest-deep water. I see that we are passing a really massive alligator. Its head is huge. Just a moment after I see it, it sees us. I hurry out of the water as it begins to follow. I remember to run in zigzags, as that's supposed to be hard for them to follow. <laughs> but my movements are awkward and short. It catches up to me, and I grab the beast by the snout, and I hang onto its head till it's doomed. I feel like I've done this several times with a few of these beasts, great 16-foot alligators, and I'm telling Alice to run in zigzag pattern if they come in mid-chase. <laughs> We see Melissa Febo sitting on the bench. <laughs> we go over to speak with her. She's wearing a see-through sweater, and, and we, or I, remark about her gorgeous breasts. <laughs> she gets really embarrassed. And I realize she didn't realize she's wearing a see-through sweater. <laughs> around a lush garden. The grounds to some house where we will be staying. I'm with some woman in a golf cart. She's talking about what she plans to do to tame and enhance the garden. She's saying, oh, I'll take care of that. I'm picturing her trimming, a, trimming with a weed whacker. We're also talking about breakups and relationships. She's talking about men, and I'm staying general. She says something about borderlines and curves, and it's unclear to me whether she's talking about the garden's overgrowth or relationships. She says, there aren't any borders anymore. <laughs> Frankenstein poem. You wanted to hear the Frankenstein poem. I'm not going to read that. You know, there's a child in the room. <laughs> <laughs> I picture myself as a bloodless thing made out of paper, easily compressed, a book or a corrugated box, mortified, exhaling whilst being crushed in, into a crack in the floorboards, evening up a table where people sit and laugh. The vampire version in this fiction lost precious blood through its endless crazy desire for the pernicious anemic. She cast me in this part. She gave so much and then drawing back drew blood. Lost my place. And drew more. Deep drafts. I didn't know she could drink so much. Like the seventh Chinese, seventh Chinese brother who swallowed the sea, leaving the fish flipping and gasping. Whales all beached because it's all beach with no ocean. I'm gasping, appalled, realizing I let it happen. She has drained me, and now I've died, only I'm still here. And if something presses on me, I lifelessly exhale her name in a whisper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.